Hello everyone, JJIR here, and in this video we're going to see a little bit about how to use forms in relationship to Google Classroom, and on top of that, how to automatically open and close Google Forms when you want to program them. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into Google Classroom here, and we have a button that says Create here. Okay, so if I create and I click on Quiz Assignment, and I click on that, this will open up a blank quiz, and then it'll give me a title and instructions. Now, the problem here is the following. If I click on this blank quiz, and we open that up, and then if we go into the settings of this blank quiz, the problem is that it's not collecting email addresses. I have no idea why Google did not put this as an automatic configuration, but it really causes problems with most of the professors who want to use this. So unfortunately, even though this does offer you the possibility to configure this as a quiz at the beginning, because it is under quizzes already activated as a quiz, the problem is that it's not very useful until we click on collect email addresses. So you will have to do this every single time, unfortunately, until Google fixes this. I'm guessing it's either a bug or something they forgot to address, but it is needed before you can actually use this in the correct manner. You also need to make sure you restrict it into your domain to make sure that no one outside of the domain is responding to these things. Limit one response is only if this is an exam. If it's an exercise, you might want the kids to respond various times. Otherwise, the idea is to make sure that you take this off if you want it as an exercise or put it on if it's an exam so they don't keep on repeating it. Under presentation, you have the possibility of shuffling the questions. So just keep that in mind that many of these things you might want to configure before you actually have it activated for the students when they're working. Please remember that if you're going to shuffle the questions, you need to make sure that you do not number the questions. Otherwise, it's going to look really weird that question number three is above question number one, etc. So please avoid numbering the questions if you're going to shuffle the question order. Now that we have this applied, which was the most important part here, we're going to click on save. And just to top it off, just to make sure, remember, don't click on response receipts because what this will do is offer the students the possibility of having a copy of the exam and the responses. So the best thing to do is just to leave it like this to make sure that everything is set. Then we're going to click on save. Finally, down here, don't forget to click on required. You need to make sure that the questions are required. Otherwise, the students will be able to jump over these questions unless you want to do that because you want something being as an option. But otherwise, you want to make sure that they're required to make sure the students finish the entire exam. We can also go in here and Click up here to make sure that we have the correct title if we so wish, and then down here to make sure it's the same if we want the students to see the same title. So after we're done configuring this, the other thing that you can do is go to responses. In responses, we have this thing here that says accepting responses. This is actually the only thing that is affected when you use the add-ons, extensions, or any type of Google Apps Script that allows you to program the form. This does not affect Google Classroom, but rather only the form. And what those extensions will do is they come in here and they turn this off or they turn it on. Please make sure that you understand that if you turn it off, if a student is filling out the form and it is turned off automatically or manually, the student will not be able to turn what he filled out in. There is no automatic save, unfortunately, in Google Farms up till now. And therefore, if they try to turn it in and press send after this has been blocked, then they will not be able to send in anything and most likely will they will lose their information. So. Please make sure you keep that in mind and you tell the students beforehand, if the form is going to be automatically closed by whatever means, whether it be manually or automatically with an extension or add-on, you need to make sure the students understand that it will be blocked and they will no longer be able to send anything in. Now, in relationship to programming this thing, we need to go to the three vertical dots up here. And then we're going to go down to add-ons. I've already done this, but you're going to have to click on this the first time so you can add this add-on to Google Forms in order to program this so that it will automatically open and close. And what you're looking for here is something that is called Control Accepting Responses. This is actually a very good extension and actually offers you a little bit of code if you want to edit it a little bit afterwards. But the idea here is that you install this now. 
The other problem that you're going to confront is that if the administrator has not allowed everyone just to install whatever they want, as you can see here, this add-on resides in the G Suite marketplace. So I'm going to stop here. We're going to go to the admin console. I know this is not for most professors, but it's important that the administrators know that they will have to add this to the domain so that the professors can use it. So presupposing that we know what this is, we're going to go to the admin console and add it there so you guys can see how this is done. Now, again, this is for administrators. Professors will not be able to do this, but it's important that the professors can tell the administrators what they need to do to make sure that this is activated for the domain. So when they go into the admin console, we're going to go into apps here, and then we're going to go into G Suite Marketplace. And once we're in here, we're going to go to Add App to Domain. We're going to click on this, and we're actually going to find that app. So in here, we're going to look for control accepting responses as we have up here. We're going to click on enter and find that guy. And as you can see, here it is. Now, it's already told me it's been installed in domain. That's not a problem. But the administrator would have to install from here. So in here, there would be a button basically accept, indicating that they could add this to the domain. So this is an example of another app. But as you can see here, you have buttons that says domain install. And that's basically what the admin would do in order to install this. So if we go back here, after that, this is done. And this is already ready to go. And therefore, at this moment in time, the professors can now add this to their accounts and begin to use it. So going back here, presupposing that we now have this available, we just click on this so we can install it. And the button for installing will be right here. We click on install. It will ask you for permissions, and therefore you need to accept all those permissions as the button accept will come out. And then after that's done, it will reside up here in the add-on section that we have up here. And then we have this that says control accepting responses. So I can click on this. And this is something I've seen that comes out a couple times. It says help. Now, this is not the way it should end up coming out. This means that there's a problem with the Wi-Fi or something else. So I'm actually glad this came out. But there should be a various multiple options here. One of them should be settings, and that will allow us to jump in and actually configure this. So we're going to have to come back in here, refresh the page, and see that, that this will come out finally. Okay, so we actually had to go out, refresh the page, come back in here, and it finally gave us the options. So just make sure you remember that to refresh and then go back in if for some reason you only have the option help here. So coming back in here, we can click on settings and info. And this will allow us to actually modify this. So it gives us a start date, hour, and minute. And then it gives us a stop date. So again, what this will do, like I mentioned before, all of this is just to stay. Please open up the Google Forms and then close it at these times. So this will open it up and this will close this. And down here, you have to make sure that your, your time place is correct. Your time zone, rather, I'm sorry. To make sure that the things that you put up here actually coincide with your time zone. So after you put day, month, and year, and all these types of things, then under status, you'll have something that will indicate to you whether or not that's already set up or not. So in this case, we don't have to set up now, but as long as you put that in there, then afterwards in status, you'll have some information indicating to you if this thing is activated or not. And then as you can see here at the very end, we actually have code. The very nice thing about this person who did this extension or add-on is that it's giving you some of the codes that you can actually prior on this later on. So this is actually something you can do, and I'm going to make another video on this so you can actually program multiple forms with a Google spreadsheet to do all this in one fell swoop. So right now, it's just form by form. But we'll offer another better, more efficient manner to do this later on using code. So here we have some code. I'm going to clean this up and I'm going to make a video explaining how with the Google spreadsheet, if you put all of the form links that you have in your classroom or in your Google Drive, you can actually program all of them at the same time instead of one by one. But we'll get to that in another video. For now, after you finish programming this, it will tell you that it's saved, as you can see down here, save and implement. And when that's done, then essentially what that's going to do is, like I mentioned here, it's going to turn this button on and off in accordance with that. Now, there is another option to do half of this in Google, in Google Classroom. How is that? If you program 
the assignments. So instead of having the assignment come out immediately, if you actually put something up here, we'll just put test again or test. Oh, we'll put test. Test here as well. And then if we go here to program, this will actually set up the opening. And meaning, given the fact the students don't see the form until it's actually been programmed, if you want the form or exam to come out at 8 o'clock, then you can program this or schedule it so that it comes out 8 o'clock. And then afterwards, you can actually use the extension to close it if you want. So you can either use the add-on to open and close, or you can use Google Classroom to, so to speak, open the form because they won't see the link to the form until this actually comes out from being scheduled, and then use the add-on to close it. So either way, you have the possibilities of fixing that. So that's in relationship to automatically opening and closing Google Forms so that you can have this programmed. Now, just a couple of details to finish off here. In Classroom, as we have already configured this, we can actually use this grade importing here at the end. Please make sure that you understand that you actually have to have this option that we mentioned here in Settings on as collecting email addresses. Otherwise, this is not going to work out very well. And thus, we presuppose this is a bug or something that Google missed when they were programming this. But otherwise, this grade importing is not going to work out very well. So you have to make sure that this is on. And then after all that's done, you can actually import the grades later on. Now, after if we presuppose the students finished off filling out the exam, then all we have to do is go into the assignments and then click on import grades, and that should allow us to pull all the grades in without any problem. And finally, just as a side note, remember that you can always pull everything from the form into a Google spreadsheet directly by using this here under responses. And then you can use other functions to manipulate the grades or to pull out averages and whatnot as well directly in forms, even without using Google Classroom, if you so wish. So I hope this helped to respond to a few of the doubts that were coming up in relationship to Google Forms and Google Classroom. If you have any other questions or comments, please put them in the comment section below. I'll be more than happy to look at those and see if I can do any other videos in relationship to this in the future if need be. Otherwise, please give a like to this video, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.